since he was a little kid. He was, he was always competitive in everything he did, and he gave 100%. I used to wrestle in high school, and I got him into wrestling. He started, he went to like the Tom's River Wrestling Club, and he, he just loved it. And it went, never stopped from there. As a freshman, he broke the varsity lineup, and he wrestled varsity all four years. My first encounter was very impressed with him. I was on the opposite sideline, so to speak, coaching Jackson High School against Tom's of East when he was a 14-year-old you know, freshman. Frankie ended up pinning a senior. We were shocked that a freshman was able to really manhandle a guy who's been in our lineup and part of our program for four years. So it was disappointing on that night, but as it turned out, we could see why it happened. <laughs> Eventually, uh... He took second in the state, and then he wound up placing second in uh, the senior nationals. And after that was history. A scholarship to Clarion. He was real successful there. I think it's very important to stress the fact in the early days that he started late. You know what I mean? I think that's so important in his story. Because here's a kid that starts wrestling in seventh grade, and you got to realize our area of wrestling is no joke. I mean, it's legit. So for him to start that late and to be placing twice in the state as a high school wrestler, that goes to show the ground he covered. Because there's kids that have been wrestling since they're five years old, like me. You know what I mean? So I think that says a lot where his work ethic closed that gap. When we came home from college, he was actually depressed. Like, he was extremely depressed just not knowing what he wanted to do with himself because he didn't want to work. He just wanted to fight. He wanted to uh, wrestle. He wanted to compete somehow. He didn't know. So he ended up going down to one of the local Atlantic City fights, and then he ended up, I guess, connecting it with some guys, ended up going to a local gym, Rhino, over in Brick, and that's where he started fighting. And I think three weeks into, like, fighting guys in that slur or training after work, like, just going there to work out, he, they told him he was going to be fighting. I knew, uh, I knew I wanted to fight. You know, my father, they were all definitely weary of it. And they were like, what are you doing, you know? Like, you just got, you just, got, you just wrestled, you just graduated from college. Why don't you just worry about, you know, starting your career, you know? And uh, I was like, I wanted to, you know, I said, this is what I want to do. The first fight we went to, we went into Brooklyn, into the Bronx. Bro, people are walking in with 12 packs of blood-stained floor. There's barbed wire around this building, okay? No air conditioning, no doors. Literally like uh, one of those cages with just the, the ropes on it. Like no, no actual octagon cage or anything. No ambulance, no medical, nothing. People were fighting in jeans. It was, it was like a, a Rocky movie to gym, like old. The people were wild. And the kid that was supposed to go into, that he fought, I think, was supposed to go drafted into the UFC. Frankie just tore him apart. I mean, the, the gym was roaring and crazy for this guy, and it was like wild. <laughs> it was wild. He got on top of this kid, mounted him, and started headbutting him. Who does that? You don't even, it's not even legal. He does what he does, and he wins. And you know, after that fight, he looks at me and he hits me with the comment of all comments that I still pull today. I want to be the Michael Jordan of MMA. And after that, you're like, wow. This kid's got it, but you know, we gotta build a team. Steve had asked me to hold pads for Frankie, and I mean, Frankie uh, really hit it off. Things I was running by him, he was picking up in a split second. He's gonna be good, you know, he's got the it factor, you know, he could be really special. Frankie set his stars for the UFC, you know, he tried to go to the tryouts. He goes to the tryouts, you know, he gets all the way to around, he's calling me, he's all excited, and you know, he gets to the end, and you know, he gets cut right at that last round of 16, and, and then two weeks later, we get a call for Tyson Griffin. At what fight in your career did you realize once and for all that you could be champion? You know, I think it was uh, the Sean Shark fight, you know, he was a former champion, and uh... I was able to beat him. Uh, I kind of had a, a good, I feel like I had a good progression in my career. You know, I definitely fought, you know, I was thrown to the wolves kind of early on. Even before I went to the UFC, I fought some real high level competition. And right into the UFC, I fought, you know, high level competition. And, you know, it's kind of like I fought Spencer Fisher, then I fought Hermes Franco, who was you know, a title contender. Then I fought, you know, a former champion in, in, in Sean Shirk. And, you know, I had that step up every, every way I went. And, you know, I was able to, to be successful. So after that Shirk fight, I knew, hey, he was a former champion. There's no reason I can't be, can't be one. There's very few people that could go through the peaks and valleys that that kid went through and still keep the focus and drive to get where you wanted to go. Champion to non-champion to number one contender, you see the same motivation, 
and the same quest in him. I've never seen the, the, the fire die. I haven't seen anything but always that strive to get better. And you know, the belt is obviously the ultimate goal. He's proven he can beat the best. He's beaten the best. I've been fortunate to have great coaches in my life. And I remember thinking if this guy came train with us, he would be the champion. I think he's the toughest fighter on the UFC's roster, and he could go down in history as one of the toughest fighters in the history of the UFC.